So as some of you guys might know, Insomniac's Spider-Man game is finally here and the hype is real. Seriously, I'm having a blast swinging through the hyper-realistic streets of NYC, beating up on criminals and trying to collect all the game's trophies while I'm out saving the day. I'll do some videos about it at some point, but today's not one of those days. Instead, I want to talk about a simpler, classic corner of Spider-Man's history. Misery, 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 that's what you've chosen. Ah yes, there's nothing like dusting off some old classics and revisiting some of what these Spider-Man movies had to offer, including the slightly poorly aged special effects, the screaming damsels in distress, classic villains, and boring Aunt May stories. Your uncle had it all planned. He took me to the beach one Sunday. Oh my god, who the hell Cash. Speaking of villains, I'm sure fans of these movies could probably name all the Spidey villains that got the Raimi treatment relatively quickly, but did you know that there was an extra unused villain in this trilogy waiting in the wings for his chance to take Spider-Man out? Seriously, he's out there. Should be pretty hard to miss too since he was prominently featured in all three movies. Remember who he is yet? It's this guy, Bruce Campbell. Groovy. Yeah, the same guy who sarcastically narrated some of my favorite Spider-Man video games was also, according to some concept art from the cancelled Spider-Man 4, apparently none other than the master of illusions himself, Quentin Beck, aka Mysterio. <laughs> serious? Hold on a second, hold on. Bruce Campbell was gonna be Mysterio in the Sam Raimi movies? Now, I'm not trying to say that that's a bad idea or anything, but how? I mean, we've seen him play an announcer at a wrestling event, a snooty usher at a play Mary Jane was acting in, and a French maitre d' at the restaurant Peter wanted to propose to Mary Jane in. Now, admittedly, it does seem like more than a coincidence that the same guy always seemed to be popping up wherever Peter goes, but at the same time, we're never told that these three roles are supposed to be the same guy, or why he was even wasting his time doing all of this in the first place. So what the hell? Unfortunately though, at first glance, it really doesn't seem like Sam Raimi included all that much in the Spider-Man trilogy to help us figure any of this out. I mean, sure, like I said earlier, Campbell always played memorable, flashy, and over-the-top characters in all three movies, suggesting a former acting career, or at least a passion for it. And if you'll think back to Spider-Man 2, there was that time he mentioned maintaining an illusion to Peter. No one will be seated after the doors are closed. It helps maintain the illusion. Illusions are Mysterio's thing, so Bruce Campbell is Mysterio confirmed, I guess? Seriously though, the biggest hole in this theory is that we have to assume that Mysterio knows who Spider-Man really is when he's not swinging around in his red and blue tights, and that he's stalking him in preparation of some kind of attack instead of just, you know, doing something to him while he's out and about in street clothes. And it's not just weak evidence that's holding this theory back either. There's also the fact that Bruce Campbell himself has said for a while now that he really isn't Mysterio, and that he was never approached about it by Sam Raimi. He's actually gone on record about it multiple times. Would I be cast as a major villain? No, only minor cameos. Back when Spider-Man 4 was still gonna be Spider-Man 4 was gonna be made. Yes. You were gonna play Mysterio. <laughs> so you read, Jack. <laughs> phone call from Sam Raimi saying, hi, oh, you're gonna be Mysterio. Who's Mysterio? So, okay, it sounds like there's a lot going against this theory, right? But when you really start to dig for the clues, it turns out there's a surprising amount to work with here. Sure, it may seem weird that Quentin Beck knows who Peter is in this universe, considering how, unlike some of the later depictions of the character, Tobey Maguire's version of the webhead actually liked to fight with his mask on, and very few characters ever managed to put the pieces together and discover his identity. Well, very few characters who actually lived anyway. <laughs> But remember, he's had ties to Spider-Man ever since the first movie. Remember who shrugged off Peter's terrible stage name and gave Spidey his official title at the wrestling arena? Human Spider, that's it? That's the best you got? Yeah. Oh, that sucks. The Amazing Spider-Man! You'd think somebody who not only named Spider-Man, but also saw him perform against Bonesaw would recognize the similar costume motif, name, and abilities whenever he saw Spider-Man in the front page of the Daily Bugle. And I know we never actually saw it in the movie, but you think Peter probably signed a liability waiver or some other kind of form after getting to the stadium, right? You know, something with his real name, probably his address. Either way, Sam Raimi's version of Quentin Beck would have had an incredibly easy time connecting Spider-Man to the guy who always 
always coincidentally takes great pictures of Spidey for some random newspaper. Even the whole thing about Campbell saying he wasn't going to be Mysterio is easily waved away if we assume that he's only saying that because the concept art and statements that came up were only concepts and nothing concrete at the time. If Spider-Man 4 actually ended up moving forward, I'm pretty sure Sam Raimi would have made it official and asked him to don the iconic fishbowl, especially considering he once said he had a meaty role for Bruce Campbell in the movie. Now, okay, let's pretend for a minute that all of this is true and that Bruce Campbell really is playing a stalkerish version of Mysterio. What's the point? What motivation could he possibly have to come after some dorky guy like Peter Parker? You could have taken that guy apart. Now he's gonna get away with my money. I missed the part where that's my problem. Holy sh**. Sure, you could argue stuff like insurance or whatever would have covered the event, but what if the place was just breaking even, or they needed the cash from the event for some other reason? I mean, I could see the whole thing being some kind of low quality scam. Like, maybe the organizers get the biggest, baddest wrestler they can find, someone who'd easily wipe the floor with anyone who challenged him, Also, they can keep the prize money after the challengers have come and gone. I mean, they clearly weren't interested in giving anything to the winner of the whole thing, so why not, right? A hundred bucks. The ad said three thousand. Well, check it again, webhead. It said three grand for three minutes, and you pinned them in two. For that, I give you a hundred, and you're lucky to get that. Regardless, it's not all that hard to assume that there could be some layoffs in an effort to cut costs and keep the business afloat, with no job and the same superpowered guy who could have saved the wrestling arena running around using the name he came up with, it definitely seems more and more likely that this version of Quentin Beck would become resentful of Spider-Man and would want to do something to take him out. Or at least mildly annoy the web slinger while gathering up bolts of fabric and a giant fishbowl helmet to make a costume. Whatever Mysterio's plan would have been, it clearly doesn't go well, considering how the concept art we eventually saw showed that he was supposed to have been captured and arrested at the beginning of the movie during a simple montage. Ah oh well, beats getting a decent looking battle suit and still, presumably, getting your ass handed to you. But anyways guys, that's my take on the whole Bruce Campbell is Mysterio angle Spider-Man 4 was apparently going to go with. If you guys agreed with anything I said in this video, or if you have your own theories you want to throw out there, then go ahead and let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, I will see you all next time. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, then go ahead and click that like button, and if you're new, maybe consider clicking that subscribe button too. I've also got links to my Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, and Patreon in the description. You should probably check those out too. And if you want to see more of my content, then you can click the link to my last video. It's right there in the middle of your screen. Alright, and I will see you all next time.